Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this grade 11 physics tutorial, we're going to be going over motion graphs, what they mean and how to draw them. So stay tuned, I'll be right back and don't forget to subscribe. All right, so we're going to start by analyzing some simple position time graphs where we're not going to have any curves, only straight lines, either diagonal or horizontal. Let's see what happens in each. So first we have our man starting at almost minus 10 meters from our starting point, which is in the middle here. That's our origin or reference point. If we watch what happens. All right, so we have a straight diagonal line. Now this represents a constant velocity and the velocity would be the slope of this line. Now since it's a positive slope, you can see that on our VT graph we just have a horizontal line because our velocity is not changing. Now what happens as this DT graph crosses the origin? Well, you can see that our man crossed the origin. Right? DT graphs just tell you your position. All right, well, what's going to happen here? Now, the slope is completely different. So if we watch, we can now see the man moving in the opposite direction. So that's a negative velocity. Negative slope on our DT graph shows a negative velocity. And finally, what does a horizontal line indicate? Let's see just means our position is remaining constant, which means we have a zero velocity. And of course, all of these examples had a zero acceleration. Of course, except when we changed our velocities right at these peaks. Next, let's analyze some situations where we're going to have curves in our DT graphs. Now we can have four different types of curves. So let's start with this one. So let's watch what happens. And I'm going to stop there. So this curve, if you look at the slope of the tangent of any point, you can see that those slopes are increasing. So what's happening is because the slope of the tangent of a DT graph is equal to your velocity, it means our velocity is increasing with a constant acceleration. In this case, set to two meters per second squared. Now, right here at this moment, we have what we call a point of inflection. So this increasing slope is going to change. Let's see what happens. All right, so what happened was, now we have a decreasing slope. So our velocity is decreasing. Now, even though the velocity is decreasing, it's still a positive value. So as you can see, the man was still moving to the right, which is our positive direction. But right now, something different is going to happen. So let's watch what happens next. All right, so right here at the peak of our curve, the man turned around and started coming back. When that happened, the velocity crossed the x-axis. So right at that peak, the speed of the man was zero. Now the acceleration was not zero. If you look at this entire slope of our VT graph, where the slope of the VT graph is acceleration, it's always the same, even as the velocity crosses the x-axis. And on our DT graph, as we move down this slope, you can see that the slope is now increasing, but becoming more and more negative, which is what's happening here to the velocity. He's speeding up, but in the negative direction, which in this case is to the left. All right, let's see what happens in this last curve here. All right, so you can see in this last curve, he's clearly slowing down. So you can see this is a decreasing slope all the way back to 
right here where our tangent would have a slope of zero. That's once again where we cross the x-axis on the vt graph and where our character here turns around. Now this is a positive acceleration, but notice that throughout here, whenever we have a positive acceleration and a negative velocity, or vice versa, we're slowing down. The only time that we're speeding up is when our velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, which happened in this first quarter here and in the third quarter here. When they were in opposite directions, such as this portion and this portion, he was slowing down. So predict what you're going to see in this last curve, which is one of these curves that we've already seen before. And let's watch. All right, now that we've seen all of this, let's try and analyze our own graphs to see if we can draw them ourselves. So in this question, we're given a velocity time graph, and we need to draw the corresponding position time and acceleration time graphs. So let's look at how we go back and forth. So if we have a VT graph, and we want to get an AT graph, what we're going to need to do is find the slope. And that's the same as when we have, say, a position time graph and we want to find velocity, we find slope. All right, so let's start by finding the slope of this line here. Now, slope is just rise over run. So our slope is going to equal the difference in our y coordinates, so y2 minus y1 over the dis difference in our x-coordinates, x2 minus x1. All right, so here we have our coordinates 2 and 0. And over here we have our coordinates 0 and negative 10. So let's figure out what the slope is then. So y2 minus y1 is going to be 0 subtract negative 10, and those have units of meters per second. And we divide that by difference in x coordinates, so 2 minus 0, and those have units of seconds. So on the numerator, we have 10 divided by 2, so that is 5 meters per second squared. And that's going to be a constant velocity. It's actually going to be the same slope all the way up to 4 seconds. So what we can do is draw a horizontal line at 5 for the first 4 seconds. And then we can do the same thing for this line here. All right, so our slope. And when you're finding the slope, you can pick any two points on that line. So let's look at this point. That is going to be 4 and 10. And this is a nice point right here. This is going to be 6 and 0. All right, so our difference in our y coordinates is going to be 0, subtract 10. And that's meters per second. All divided by difference in our x coordinates, which is going to be 6 minus 4 and units of seconds. So this gives us negative 10 over 2, which is going to be negative 5 meters per second squared. Okay, and our positive direction is east. So this will be east, and that would be either negative 5 east or positive 5 west. But on our graph, since our graph is east, we're going to draw it at negative 5 for the next 4 seconds. And then finally, this last line, a horizontal line, has a slope of 0. So for the last two seconds, we will have an acceleration of zero. So there is our acceleration time graph. Next, position. Now to find position from a velocity time graph, what we can do is find the area under the graph. Now the area doesn't necessarily tell us position, but it tells us change in position, right? Or displacement. Similarly, if you were to go 
from acceleration to velocity, it would only tell you change in velocity. So let's start by finding the area of this portion here. Let's call that A. So the area of A is going to equal, now that's a triangle, so it's just one half base times height, one half. Our base right here has a length of two seconds. And our height right there has a height of negative 10 meters per second. You can see our seconds cancel. And that is going to give us a displacement of negative 10 meters. All right, so that area A has a displacement of negative 10 meters. Right, now, let me just erase this so that I can draw on our graph there. All right, so after two seconds, we are over here at negative 10 meters. We started, and let's just assume we started at the origin. So now the question becomes, how am I going to connect these two lines? Should I connect them in a straight line or a curve? Well, we're not going to connect them in a straight line because a straight line represents constant velocity or uniform motion, and clearly our velocity is changing. In fact, our velocity is slowing down. We're going from negative 10 meters per second to zero. So we're coming to a stop at this point. And when we're at a stop, we should have a horizontal tangent. So at this point, should be horizontal. Now over here, we have a very large velocity. So over here, it's going to be more vertical. So our curve is going to look something like this. All right, so continuing, let's find the area of this section. Let's call it B. Okay, so the area of B, again, is going to be 1 half base times height. So our base is 2 seconds. And our height is going to be positive 10 meters per second, which gives us 10 meters. Now remember, this is a change in position. It doesn't mean that after four seconds, our position is going to be 10 meters. It means for the next two seconds, we are moving 10 meters east. Well, since right here, we're at 10 meters west of the origin, if we move 10 meters east, we're going to end up right at the origin. All right, and again, I do not want to connect them in a straight line. Now this point here, had a zero velocity, so it's got a horizontal tangent. Now this part here has a large velocity, so it's going to be somewhat vertical. Now it's never going to be perfectly vertical because perfectly vertical is like an infinite velocity. We're not going to have that. But this is just a good idea uh, to show you what your curve should be shaped like. So it's going to look something like this. Right, so there we have an increasing slope. So our velocity is increasing here. This has a decreasing slope to show a decreasing velocity. Now, if we're to continue, these triangles have similar areas. This one is actually uh, 10 meters, and this one is negative 10 meters. So if we're following the same rule, for the next two seconds, we have a close to a vertical slope here. We're at zero speed, so it's going to have a horizontal slope. So let's continue drawing our curves. And going down to a slope that is more vertical, showing a high velocity, like so. All right, now this last portion. Let's call this area E. Let's find this area. So that area, that's a rectangle. So it's just length times width. So our length is going to be negative 10 meters per second times the width, which is two seconds. So that gives us minus 20 meters. So from here, we're going to go down to 20 meters right here. 
Now, how are we going to connect these lines? Well, this shows a constant velocity. So a constant velocity shows a diagonal line, straight line on our position time graphs. And that's how we convert our motion graphs. So what would this example look like for a runner? Well, it would look something like this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video.